I'm sorry, Christian, we're putting you straight Why on. do you hate me? Well, you have to, you have to kind of put your, your money where your mouth where is today, your trainers? really. Don't if I'd known I'd put my sports bra on, <laughs> but, you know... You don't have to go too fast, OK? Oh, so just goodness. start gently, because Denise is ahead of you here. Absolutely. She's um, been yeah, practicing. going strong. Um, so this programme is called 12 Hours to Cure Your Street. It's yeah. going to be on Thursday evenings, 8 o'clock on the... <laughs> Yes, come on. Is, it go is it actually going? I can't yes. hear a word you're saying. I'm not listening at all. This is going to be a disaster. OK, yeah. so, 12 yeah. hours to cure your street. Tell yeah. us the, the, uh, the inspiration behind the show and what it's about. So I think many different areas in the country are going to get the giggles doing <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is ridiculous. You know, have different problems. Access to GPs is a problem, or they have sort of social issues like a lot of alcoholism, a lot of drug use, whatever it might be. So every different area has its own unique set of problems, which aren't always addressed very well because of want of, uh, of, of access to help and yeah. things. So we go around exploring that and just trying to add a little bit to, to, to helping people out. And I presume you're seeing all sorts of problems, all sorts of age groups as well, if you're going to a street. Um, you're not in any way a kind of <laughs> saying that... <laughs> I know, I'm so glad you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> This is, this I'm is sorry, quite I'm ridiculous. about to wet myself and you're just trying to ask really serious questions <laughs> while Christian's... Sorry, carry on. No, but you're not saying... You know, obviously, G, GPs, GPs might watch this and say, well, you should be coming to your GP. This is just that you're saying they don't always have the time or people can't get the appointments Two week wait, you know, for an appointment or, or just not enough GPs at all. Mm -hmm. Or actually... Perhaps people just have jobs and lives and hundreds of kids and yeah. can't get to the GP. We've got, I don't think we medics are very realistic sometimes. You know, we give out this advice that isn't always particularly workable to people's actual working lives, yeah. you know, and we forget that. So, yeah. I mean, I'm a real emergency booker, so and, and t when I actually feel I'm at death's door, I'll then try and get an emergency appointment. But the thought that I'd book an appointment in four weeks' time just never happened. You can't always predict when you're going to be ill, either, no, can you? No, and also, no. I think the other point was that old-fashioned home visit doesn't happen so much anymore, and you can learn so much from... <laughs> Sorry, giggles are coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Am I walking in a really camp way? Because I'm... <laughs> You do, you know. do, but this is um, so the, the, the mental health situation, because that lady that you were talking to there, you weren't just talking about her physical condition. You could see she was carrying the burden of feeling that Absolutely. she'd passed it on. And the home visit, you can learn so much from people's home environments. Either the hygiene isn't very good or the 16 cats probably might be adding to yeah. the um, yeah. ongoing stomach problems. I mean, but... Yeah, this mental is, health is... Yeah, sorry. This is all part of the Daily Mile, which is the ITV Feel Good campaign. So they're encouraging school children to do a Daily Mile, jogging yeah. for 50 minutes every day. Oh, is this why we've Hence got them on why, the yes. This I is why. I'm going to explain <laughs> why we've got them on here. Um, and, Denise, we were talking about mental health earlier, and exercise, they say, is Absolutely. really important I mean, you know, the, 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 sometimes if you're really, really, really depressed, and I know that as well as being a doctor, you've also suffered yourself, yeah. you can't literally even get out out of bed, let alone walk. But when you are in a more lucid state, definitely keeping up exercise. I mean, I've been addicted to most things. I try to get addicted to fitness, and sadly, I can't. <laughs> but, um, but I've realised how much it does help in my well periods. It helps me deal with my not well periods. The fitter yeah. I, I am. I mean, I'd love mental health to be talked about more in schools and stuff. And I me know too. that's something I think that. You've done a yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we. Um, we learned a new word from Denise today, the in endogenous uh, depression yeah. that Denise suffers from. Yeah. So, would you say yours was endogenous or is it, was it circumstantial? I think so. It, I, I think it was complicated in that it was to do with self-esteem, which came from childhood, which came as growing up a gay boy with no points of references and therefore not feeling worthless. Uh, lots of things. It's always sort of... You can't always unpick everything, yeah. but... I think we, we are sometimes our own worst enemy and the little voice in our head telling us all the negative things that it so often tells us. And that's the thing that tends and to And sometimes sabotage. those don't manifest until you're a grown-up. Absolutely. Then. You don't really understand it. Or, or, or actually you start listening to it and acting on it and then that's very dangerous. But I think we sometimes start to sabotage our good efforts so that, oh, why bother with it? I'll go for a walk. Yeah, right, I'll lie in bed and drink. You know, that's sort of what the voice is telling you. To overcome that is, is quite always difficult. Think, sorry, with, with exercise, you do have to go to a gym, but even just a walk, like you said, is so good I for you, like, isn't I like it? just, just going nice out with walk. my dog, you know, and just that half an hour 
hour that I get to myself, I get some fresh air, uh, you know, and it's like, it's my headspace. It's a bit but ironically, time. what we say is, is, if you can hold a conversation whilst walking, then you're not exerting yourself. Well, actually, this. the NHS say here, it's got to be a brisk walk. You yes. should be walking at about three miles an hour. Are you right? Do you know that? what would get me through it is two hours of 90 Day Fiance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's on a screen. We can yeah. arrange it that. Says, it says, Look. you should still be able to talk, if both of you can. Yeah. But you shouldn't Just. be able to sing. Can you give us a song? <laughs> you don't have to say you love me, little medley of my hit <laughs> from 1995. <laughs> <laughs> Christian, can you give us a tune? I think getting a man to walk and talk at the same time <laughs> is an achievement <laughs> enough, don't you? I do think you're doing absolutely sterling <laughs> effort. Um, what, why would you like people to tune in to 12 Hours to Cure Your Street? What are you hoping that we're all going to get out of it? I hope it will give you some inspiration into and some insight into perhaps a problem you haven't realised that you've got. You'll see people carry guilt. That lady that you saw in the clip carried so much guilt for having a child that also had the same yeah. condition as her. Actually, you know, with the right management, that child's going to enjoy a long, healthy life, I would hope. But we, we still sort of... that, And that's the sort of thing that a 10-minute GP consultation just doesn't yeah. have time to cover. We focus on the knee dislocation, Absolutely. the pain, not everything else. And, and if you mm. sort it out at that point, it means that further down the line, it's not going to yeah. cost the NHS yeah. even and more. And if you have got a pain, if you're also let's say, depressed, guilty, whatever, that's going to make all that pain so much worse. Yeah. Yeah. And so managing everything makes such a big difference, but it's what we don't do enough um, I've got about 10 seconds left. Can you have got a quick oh, calorie goodness. count? How many calories have you burnt on there? Um, 13. How many? <laughs> what did you say? Calories. calories. I'd know at 36. 36. 36. No, 54. Oh, OK. 54. Thank you very much, Dr. Christian, everybody. Yeah.